Okay, calling the Brandon Board of Education uh, meeting to order. Could I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Kalaga. Here. John Chartier. Here. Melissa Clark here. Marianne Dwyer. Here. Lisa Cavalluno. Here. Kevin McClellan. Here. Ann Salter. Here. Jan Meek. Here. Carly Stone. Here. Diane Zidane. Here. Dr. Carl Heidrich. Here. Okay, we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on our agenda, we got the superintendent report from Dr. Heidrich. Okay, good evening. Good evening. I'd like to start off with COVID numbers, and those are the spreadsheets in front of you. Uh, doing uh, much better. Uh, our cases have leveled off. We have a total of uh, 24 students quarantined, um, and we have five staff members quarantined for a total of 29. We still have uh, uh, a couple positive cases at the high school, uh, at Harvey. We have one. Oakwood Elementary, we have one uh, staff and two uh, students. And high school is looking a lot better. Transportation is looking good, and central office is looking good. So total current positive state staff cases is four, student cases is four, and a total of 29 quarantine. Um, and knowing those numbers, we do have it's a local school district choice to open up the high school. <coughs> doesn't require board action. Um, we didn't take board action to close it on the order. So um, I'm recommending that we stay open Good. and come back on January 4th and that the high school is open. Awesome. We'll still monitor the numbers. Um, but that's my recommendation at this point. I support that. I mean, I that we're voting, but I can support for that. Anybody got a concern about that? No, just very excited. <clears throat> Good. The news. Okay, and then yesterday on the December 20th, the, the 900 billion dollar stimulus uh, did pass. And what does that mean for schools? Looks like uh, 54 billion in K-12 funding will be coming to the state of Michigan. We do not know how that funding will be uh, distributed at this point, but it'll probably follow a similar pattern that we've seen in the uh, spring, and that funding could be significant. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what that funding looks like, but. Uh, the district will be getting more federal dollars at some point this spring, and we'll see what the uh, requirements are to spend that uh, funding since it's federal dollars. Are there usually some strings attached to that 54 million? It, yeah, it's, yes, we're, we're anticipating that there'll be similar restrictions and how it's spent as the How was it done last time? Would it, would it require us to be done? Well, it's just it depending on it, it had uh, some. Uh, restrictions as far as how you spend it, not right. necessarily all in general fund. You can then have technology or use for COVID related items. Um, so there are some definitely some restrictions with that. Okay. So we get re reimbursed for money we spent for COVID? Yes. And then this could go into next, uh, some, next school year as well. We'll okay. see how far we can take it. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions for Carl regarding those two areas, a couple areas? Mm -hmm. And then the final um, update would be from Chris um, for COVID and, the, and also um, your fall update, Chris, okay? Welcome, Chris. Can you hear us? I can. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, so I, I guess first I, I'd like to, I know that we have uh, three board members that uh, will be exiting here at the end of the school year or at the end of the calendar year. So I, I just want to say thank you to Marianne, John, and Kevin for your service on the board um, uh, and a personal special thank you because you were part of the board that approved me five years ago and, and hired me at, at the Brandon <laughs> District. I love, I love working at Brandon. I appreciate the opportunity that was given to me and, and I look forward to being here for a long time. Um, but thank you to the three of you and the support that you've shown me and the athletic program and the, the school district over the years. So uh, thank you. Um, thank you yep. Uh, next, uh, I think it's really important before I talk about our, our athletes that I recognize our, our coaches. 
Um, they have done an outstanding job all summer and fall through this pandemic. Um, most of them, when they got the green light in June to get going, they, they've been going full tilt since they got that green light. Um, we've just had so many hurdles and obstacles, you know, with these COVID protocols. And then the fall season was a, was a question mark if it was going to even go. There was a delay start to it. And then we had ever, ever changing schedules. Um, they had to learn how to do the daily temperature screenings. They became social and emotional therapists to their athletes and, and their colleagues. Um, and then on top of all that, they had to coach. Um, and they just really up their game this, this fall. Um, and they did it with grace. They did it with flexibility. They did it with professionalism. And they just truly embodied the philosophy of, of putting kids first and doing what's best for kids. Um, so I'm really proud of our coaching staff. Uh, I'm proud to be a Blackhawk. And, and as we say in the athletic department, we are Blackhawks. Um, so I, I just really appreciate our coaches. And, and I know our winter and spring coaches are itching to get going as well. So um, part of my report tonight is a quick fall recap on, on what happened over the fall season and then give you a quick update of where we're headed for the winter. Um, boys tennis, they finished eighth in the Flint Metro League this year. They actually placed fourth fourth at the MHSA regional tournament up in Petoskey. We had three players that received all league honors. Um, and I had several players and the coach thanked me at the end of the year, uh, saying that this was probably the most fun they've had in tennis, given everything that was going on, that they had a great time playing tennis and it was a great trip to Petoskey. Um, volleyball found themselves in a re rebuilding year this year. Uh, they finished fifth in the Flint Metro uh, Stars division. And we had two players from the volleyball team that received all league honors. Um, our girls swim and dive team is a cooperative team with Goodrich. Um, again, overall, they, they finished eighth in the league, uh, but it was a season of improvements at the league meet in particular. We had 14 personal best times that were achieved by our swimmers. Um, we had a group of swimmers, um, our 200 meter relay team, uh, that received all league honors. And then our diver, uh, who is actually a good rich student, but her mom is a Brandon employee. So I have to give her props, Macy Polisek. Uh, she qualified for the division two state dive finals. Um, and obviously with the news that was released on Friday, she's excited to be able to compete at the state finals um, on January 15th at Grand Rapids Northview High School. So she's going to do some practicing over the break. And then after the new year, she'll really get in the pool and, and prepare for that state dive final. Boys and girls cross country was unique this year. Normally it's a one division sport, but due to all the COVID restrictions, we had to split them up um, and run them by divisions this year. So our boys, uh, they finished fifth in the Flint Metro Stars division. Um, they were a young team, uh, but again, like swimming had a lot of personal and best, personal best times and showed a lot of growth of, and improvement. Um, our girls team, they finished fifth in the Flint Metro League as well. Um, however, they were led by junior Mallory Moore. Uh, Mallory qualified for the state finals and competed at the state finals, division two state finals. She didn't place, so she didn't receive all state recognition, but it was pretty, pretty cool to have her run in the state finals um, anyway. And then girls golf, this was, uh, believe it or not, this was kind of a unique year. This is the first time in the five years I've been at Brandon where we've had a full girls golf team. Um, and if you know anything about scoring in golf, it's very, very uh, strategic to have a full team because the more, more scores we have, the better we, we place. So um, they tied for eighth in the Flint Metro League. And Leah Lafleur, who's a junior, she uh, qualified for the Division Three state finals and also competed at the state finals. Um, Leah earned first team all league honors, and she was actually the number two golfer in the entire league all year long. Um, there was only one other girl better than her. And then Jenna Wetzel, um, who was also a junior, she received all league honors. Our boys soccer team, uh, had an outstanding year. They finished 14 and five overall fourth in the league. Um, there was actually a three-way tie for the Flint Metro league this year. Um, so we were, we were in the, in the hunt, unfortunately, just came up a little bit short. Um, the boys soccer team had a heartbreaker loss in, over, in an overtime shootout in the district championship. Um, we had eight players that received all league honors. Three of them also received all state honors. 
Uh, AJ Reynolds received honorable mention all state. Ian Burke was a third team all state uh, placer. And then Ben Gritska, our goalie, received second team all state. Um, and Ben also, along with the team, set MHSA records with seven consecutive shutout games. Wow. And then Ben will graduate uh, ranked 15th all time in the MHSA record books with 32 career shutouts. Oh. Uh, so again, our soccer team and, and Ben Gritska uh, had an outstanding season and, and career. Um, and then for, for football, again, uh, right, on, right on the tail of boys soccer there, they had an outstanding season as well. Seven and two overall, they were the Flint Metro League Stars Division champs. Coach Brad Zuby was named the Stars Division Coach of the Year. We had 17 players receive all league honors. And then we had four players uh, Peyton Gulledge, Gino Trebuzio, Juwan Slater, and Brayton McQueen received all region honors. And then Peyton Gulledge um, and Gino Trebuzio both earned all state honors. Peyton was actually uh, named to the first team all Metro North uh, team by the Detroit Free Press for linebacker. Uh, and in order to get into that category, uh, he's thrown in there with a lot of the D2, D2, D1 and D2 and private school players. So he is uh, in that group of the best of the best from Oakland County. So um, overall, we had 35 fall athletes that earned all league honors. We also had 50 fall athletes who earned Flint Metro League Scholar Athlete recognition, which means they carried a 3.5 GPA or higher during the whole fall season. Um, and of those scholar athletes, 14 of the scholar athletes also were all league uh, athletes as well. Um, so with all the things considered happening this fall, I say we had a pretty successful fall season. Um, heading into winter, like I said a few minutes ago on Friday, um, with the update from the Department of Health and Human Services and the MHSAA, um, only fall tournaments, so football, volleyball, and girls swim and dive, those tournaments could immediately start practicing with some protocols in place um, to finish up those tournaments. But the rest of the winter sports, with the exception of downhill ski, have to wait until Janu after January 15th to begin practicing. Um, we're expecting another update from the MHSA by the end of the day tomorrow or first thing Wednesday. Um, and then once that update comes out, the Flint Metro AD group uh, we'll be getting together to rework our winter schedules. Um, I'm expecting that the winter tournament dates will get pushed back into late March. <clears throat> and then as re was released in the press, uh, there's supposed to be no delay to our spring sports start. Um, just the winter sports will be adjusted based on what comes out tomorrow or Wednesday. So um, lastly, I, I, before I open it up to questions, I just want to wish all of you a, a Merry Christmas and a safe and restful holiday break. Hopefully you get to spend time with your, your family and loved ones and enjoy that time. So that's my, uh, my wrap up and preview. Are there any questions for me? First of all, Chris, thank you very much. I, I really like it. Your tribute to the coaches was perfect and spot on. They needed to be recognized the whole athletic department and the athletes also need to be recognized. And it was a great season in the fall for what we could play. Uh, anybody have any questions for Chris? I do. Sure. So in, uh, I got a call, it doesn't matter, over the weekend, one of the two days, from a mom of uh, a wrestler. And her question was, does it seem like when we the winter sports can occur that there'll just be a truncated season since they'll have less, less matches. Thank you, I can think of it. Um, and I, I said, I would assume so if in fact the, the winter sports are not gonna be, the time period is not gonna be extended, then it's just gonna be a, a truncated schedule. Is that your understanding so far? Yeah, that, that would be my assumption as well. Um, just like what happened in the fall, we got a late start football season. They got to play six regular season games instead of nine. Mm -hmm. um, volleyball, soccer, they were all shortened seasons and I expect that winter will do the same thing. I, I anticipate wrestling instead of having 14 matches, they might get five to seven or eight matches depending on, on how the tournament plays out. Basketball will not play 20 games. I'm guessing they're going to be somewhere between 
12 and, and 14 or 16 at the tops. Um, so again, that's, that's the update we're waiting for from the MHSA tomorrow to, to find out when the season will start and end. Um, the rumor on the street is that it'll get pushed back to the end of March, but we will not spill over it past uh, the first part of April. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else questions for Chris? Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate the report, and uh, we'll see you next year. And ha happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Merry Christmas. Question. Okay, next on our agenda. Okay, for COVID, are, are there after the first of the year? Would they, do you think there'll be more kids coming back to school? Well, we have, uh, we, it's, it might be part of a, a, a Carly's presentation. She's going to talk about transitions a little bit. And we do have a, a number of kids that are coming back. Okay, the second thing I, I want to ask you is if the kids and teachers all had COVID, can you get more kids in that class and say, Right now, the MDA, that's a great point, uh, but the MDHS will, will not allow that at this time. They, they still want. Want the, the six foot space. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for Carl? I, I do. Has anybody else heard anything about three to five foot spacing? I have a little bit, not enough to have an opinion, but yeah. I heard. Well, I was wondering if it was confirmed in any fashion by a, any. I, I've heard some of that, but I haven't. You haven't seen anything yeah. of authority telling That's us. Right. So, okay. I've kind of yeah, put myself there. I think that came also after less than the was a 14 days. That's 10. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it part of that not, discussion. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all I heard. Got it. Thank you so much. And I have January workshop session. Yeah. So um, and it might be something that when the board gets to see the, the new board gets to see January 11th to see if I schedule what time we put, put a January or February session before the meeting or it's up to the board. So. Okay. I okay. see. We'll start on that. First thing next year. First thing next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Top of the agenda. Yeah, top of the agenda. And that's all I have to report. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hydrick. Okay, next I have public comments and questions on agenda business. Uh, again, if you would raise your hand on our virtual and you can call upon uh, our agenda talks about what you could do and not do, but three minutes. Is there anybody that would like to talk on? Agenda business. No. Okay. There's no one. See, seeing that there's none, uh, next, I'd like approval of the consent agenda. Can I get a motion, please? We'll okay. get the Brandon Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? Having none, could I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Felder? Yes. Okay, next is information and discussion items, board report. Uh, this is the last meeting for three of our board members who have done a tremendous service for many years. Uh, what we're going to do is before we go into closed session, we're going to go honor you. So we're going to move that to just before closed session. Uh, that's all really I have for the board. Uh, anybody else got anything for committee reports? Okay, finance report, Jan. Hi, good evening. Um, tonight, one of the action items is um, we're asking the board to approve for us to go out for an RFP for playground, uh, an upgraded playground at Harvey Swanson for preschool. This has been in the works for about three years. Um, we thought we had some funding and we didn't have funding. Uh, we actually purchased a little bit of equipment a couple of years back. Um, this year, because of our GSRP grant was not reduced this year, but we've had a reduction in the staff we needed due to um, a reduction in kids. So therefore, we're in a good position. We have some uh, funds, and we also had uh, some good carryover from last year. So combining all that, we have about um, 80,000 that we can spend 
Now, Oakland Schools is requiring us to do a match. So what the request would be is that we have, um, it's a two to one match. So about 67,000 will come out of the GSRP grant and about 33,000 will come out of our child care because obviously the child care kids mm -hmm. will be using it as well as our GSRP. So $100,000 is what we're looking at. Um, this is just permission tonight to go out to bid. Um, we'll see what we have. We have um, Brian Smilnak has been working on the, um, um, drawings for the bid spec. So we'll be looking at mid to maybe third week of January, putting it out on the street, and then should have um, some bids back for the board to review in February. And if you choose, if you so choose, we would pick, you would pick a contractor in February and the goal would be to have the project completed in May once the ground gets better. So, um, Good. And is that gonna be in that little area? Yeah, it's gonna be where the current playground's at. They're gonna be removing what's there. They're gonna be putting in these swings, a climbing structure, a, um, uh, a bike path so the kids can ride their tricycles oh, down okay. the bike um, or up and yeah. down a path. Um, sandbox, is that a diner? In, in large sandbox. In a large sandbox, oh, I already have a cover. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Unfortunately, then that's large. Unfortunately, hundred thousand doesn't go up. Yeah, and, and, and playground land a hundred thousand is not that much, but it will be enough for our preschoolers to really have a nice, uh, a nicer area. Nice. Anybody got questions for Diane or Jan on this? Sounds awesome. Yeah, sounds nice, Jan. Anything else, finance? That's my report tonight. Okay, thank you. Education report, Carly. Thank you. All right. So, um, just a few updates for you this evening. Um, just get right at it. So, um, typically, when we come together, we talk about what we've accomplished since we saw each other last what we're currently work, working on and what we are looking forward to. Um, so what we've accomplished since we saw you last, report cards were distributed to families in which report cards were issued um, at the elementary level where students received progress reports. And so those went, home, those went home with students along with their NWEA reports from their fall testing. Um, any student in the district that has been identified as having a reading, an ear, a reading concern, um, has been issued an independent, or excuse me, an individualized reading improvement plan from our teachers here in the district. Um, those were distributed at the beginning of December. So families have received that information and um, they are aware of what we're working on to help um, their students gain ground. And then lastly, uh, we actually uh, have a new hire here in the district for a new position. Uh, through EduStaff, we were able to find this amazing young lady uh, that comes to us um, with a really a world of experience um, in terms of um, understanding language. Um, our EL program is growing here in the district. We have about 66 students right now that we service that are considered an English language learning, learning student. And one of the one of the struggles that I we noticed being here in the district is communicating with families can be very tricky. And so what we didn't have in the district was someone we could rely on to help us with those communications with frequency. And so this particular new hire is someone who has a tremendous amount of language skill. After graduating from Western in her degree in communication, she lived in Madrid for four years, where she actually taught English. Um, she did some study abroad in China, and she most recently just uh, moved back from Germany. So um, oh, we are God. so fortunate to have her. Yes. Her name is Lindsay Teich, um, and uh, she lives right here in Clarkson, so she's not too far away. She's been with us for a couple of weeks already, um, and we're just super excited to have her and her skill set here in the district because we really believe that that skill set will really complement the other members of the team and really helped us connect with families and help those students thrive. So super excited about that. What we're currently working on, well, as a, as a result of Lindsay being with us, we're really defining the EL program, making sure it's very strong and um, uh, vibrant for all of our students and kind of determining who's on first, who's gonna be working with what families and what students, et cetera, and how are we doing that 
in coordination with some other services in the district. We have some male students that may also be special education students. Um, and so just trying to be thoughtful about all of that and putting that together. So again, we have a robust system there for our students. Um, along with EL, our first set of state assessments are right around the corner. The WIDA assessment, which is the assessment we give to our ELs, is uh, set to launch on February 1st. So um, we're going to be spending the next few weeks uh, preparing our students. When I say preparing, I mean getting all the testing information and, and all the booklets and all of those things and um, ensuring that all of our staff are trained and ready to go for the um, assessment to launch on February 1st. Um, to speak to John's question earlier about second semester changes and education plan requests, uh, we have about 100, again, it seems to be our magic number this year, we have um, about 100 requests that have come in um, in regards to a change. A third of those are for families to either transition from Summit virtual to brand and learn from home or from our in-person program to our learn from home. So we do have some folks that are looking to go online. And then the remainder of those students, the other two thirds are families that are, are hoping that there's a space available for them in our buildings. So as you know, that survey closed uh, just a short while ago. So this past week uh, that just completed, we've been working with building administrators going through those numbers, looking at spaces that are available. And we look forward to continuing that work when we return back in January. Um, it is our intent to let families know by mid-January whether their request will be able to be added or not. Um, you guys know, in certain spots, things are pretty tight. So it's causing us to be very creative and very thoughtful. And uh, that's taking us some time to do so. And so, um, but we will absolutely be communicating with families by mid January. That is our commitment. So, who would you talk to if you wanted to put all the COVID kids that had COVID? You know, if you put them on the who would you talk to to get a finger I don't know. I'm going to. Well, it, it, would be, it would be difficult because of, of privacy information. Um, so, we would, we would struggle with, with doing that concept a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple more things we're working on just to finish this up here uh, today. First semester exams. There's been a lot of discussion in the county and in the state about the final exam process for first semester. Um, so we um, you know, have made some adjustments to what first semester exams look like. So Brandon is going to be having first semester exams. I know many districts across the county have chosen to not give exams at all. So we have made the adjustment. We've been working with our teachers. We've also invited our teachers to look at other ways students may be able to show their learning. Maybe it's not necessarily a traditional multiple choice exam. Maybe it's some kind of portfolio presentation, some kind of project. We've invited our teachers the chance to collaborate with each other so that everyone in LA1 has the same experience, everyone in US history has the same experience, mm -hmm. Algebra 1, etc. And so that weighting has changed rather than 20%, it's been moved down to 10% given the fact that we're in pandemic circumstances. Across the board. Across the board. And, um, and given the conversations we've had with other districts, local to us, and the fact that we feel really good about the programming we've had in place since we began, we really feel that's the, and being teachers, um, we had lots of conversations with teachers, they're very comfortable with this. Um, and so we're feeling like that's, that's the right thing to do for our students here in Brandon, so we're pretty excited. And then lastly, uh, just trying to be thoughtful about second semester. What have we learned about first semester that we, maybe we can tweak and improve upon for second semester? So some of those items include, um, can we invite back some of those students that have been a part of those summit virtual elective classes? Are there ways we can tie a brand and teacher to that and maybe have some brand and learn from home electives rather than it be a summit virtual um, elective for students. So trying to be thoughtful, there's lots of tweaks that we're, we're working on, being thoughtful to such education programming. Um, there's email that you know, came through uh, this afternoon, even though our, our teachers are on break, they just, they are relentless and they just love what they do and uh, they're still checking away. So um, lots of ideas out there, really trying to be thoughtful and creative so that we can ensure that they have a really great program continuing to move forward. Thanks for watching. Of course, Lisa. How are things looking for planning as to uh, kids who are quarantined um, due to a positive uh, test or just quarantined because of, of contact um, on a contact basis? 
One more thing to the key point is the, the curriculum and access to teachers and all. And I know everybody's doing a fantastic job sure. of providing as much access as they possibly can. Sure. But there's only so much time in a day. Is more uh, thought being given for second semester as to how those quarantine kids can be live with the instruction going on at the same time or in some other measure? Right. Yeah, so great question. So we, that's something we continue to wrestle with because mm -hmm. um, we recognize that it's something that is, that is absolutely tricky. We have some teachers that are very comfortable having you know the computer available and mm -hmm. zooming in with, with their students and trying to navigate having students live while having mm -hmm. students online. We also know that techno technology can be a bit of a hindrance for us in, uh, across the district of the secondary, making sure we've got the right equipment in the classrooms to provide a good opportunity to do that. Um, so it's we're still talking about it, so there's no um, final answer yet. Sure. Um, but it's definitely something we continue to talk about. Do you find when you talk about it that it possibly is a, a, a show off my technical expertise here, <laughs> not so much, um, <laughs> you know, is it an equipment issue? Is it is it something that um, with with improved equipment in each class, this is something that uh, could be improved on, and I use improved on not to suggest that everybody isn't trying their best or there's something is it's not a disparaging comment. It's sure. just in, looking for opportunity for improvement. Absolutely. So um, is it an equipment thing? Is it like what's the identifiable? Because I have people calling me. Sure. And then. In all transparency, we had experiences where they were fantastic. Yes. Again, can't say enough. Is there room for improvement? For sure. Doesn't matter what grade you're in or what rigor level or whatever. Yeah. The same challenges exist mm -hmm. whether you're trying to do AP, you know, um, chem or, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the same issue, and I hear from every, excuse me, everyone on it. So, what is the like? I think there's a couple things. things. Yeah. yeah, so the couple things that the tech we talked about tech just a few minutes ago. And the other piece truly is it's it's, it's exceptionally difficult as a teacher to feel as though you're doing both programs sure. justice. Sure. And so just trying to be thoughtful to mm -hmm. that without feeling like they're sliding either group on right. the computer, you know, whether it's <coughs> the computer or in person. Right. Uh, we have some teachers that are very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when we said if you're comfortable, go for it. Right. If you're not comfortable, what other things we can we do that to, yeah. you know, and, um, and so that's kind of where we are right now, although I know every time we're meeting, I know the high school particularly is where we notice because of the block <clears throat> schedules of big chunks of time yeah. and such, um, you know, people are continuing to have conversations about what ways can we do this better and what ways can we be smarter. Uh, we haven't arrived at the pace of it, but we're definitely continuing to talk. Those are the two, I'd say those are two big rocks that are really um, teachers' comfort level in sure. it. Um, and then also the technology piece. Is it that fair? Yeah, that's, that's, that's just to provide to provide feedback. What I when I'm getting these calls, yeah, many of the many, yeah, many is a good word. Um, many of the parents are um, saying, "Hey, I get it. I don't even you know expect any uh, person, any teacher, to be able to you know direct their attention to a screen and direct their attention to those in the classroom." Their suggestion, their hope was that the student could even just be a, a silent bystander and just listen, have the benefit of listen. the class presentation yeah. okay. and not, and I know that may still not make certain teachers feel comfortable. I'm just sharing with you, oh, which I'm sure okay. you've also heard sure. feedback I've gotten from uh, probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 parents, separate families, okay. um, saying who maybe have been quarantined or they haven't, but in anticipation of it, sure. they're concerned. Yeah. So I've had many people say, even if he or she could just be on the screen listening yeah. and get the benefit of seeing you know, what's going on yeah. or hearing what's going on, that's kind yeah. of been wrong. And I had teachers who, you know, wanted, you know, they tried it beginning of school year and we're now doing some switching. So sure. some teachers have figured out how to do it. Yeah. And I think a lot depends on the content that they're teaching. Of course, yeah. Okay, so if it's really individualized, it doesn't seem to be working very well, yeah. then it's okay. If it's um, if, if you're being pulled, you know, in two different directions, then you don't feel like you're giving anybody enough. Exactly. Time. So, yeah. so we've done some switching even in our department. Um, sure. That you know, some teachers like, I'm fine. I can do. I'm doing it. I'm doing. I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah. And some teachers like, I'm not doing it justice. And so we're doing some switching. So we're going to have just, you know, online classes and in the question classes. It's just sometimes that mixing just doesn't work for certain. Sure. Subjects. But like, 
Like I said, some teachers are racking it and they're doing fine. You know? yeah. so. Well, I, we appreciate the feedback very much. And uh, we're happy to continue to have the conversation. But that's not a problem. And if there are other things we can continue to be thought, thoughtful to that we haven't arrived at yet. So I appreciate that. And if you hear any other thoughts, feel free to share yeah. those with us. We appreciate it very much. We're, Lord knows this is a problem solving here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. And to everybody's credit, there's only, you know, and it's a, it's an emotional time. So only a few were were quite emotional and, and discussing it. But everybody else is really like we're just in a problem solving mode. Like how, you know, really positive and, sure. and forward looking and what can we learn and how can this be accomplished. So I want to share that with you too. The tone was very um optimistic and, and again problem solving. It wasn't complaining. Oh no, well awesome. thank you for that. And I just yeah. also our teachers are just working so very, very exactly. hard and they always want to give their best, mm -hmm. right? And so they just want to be thoughtful to that for our students' behalf. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a compliment to the teachers. Mm -hmm. They these kids and the parents want them yes. to see that teacher, mm -hmm. hear that teacher, hear their classmates, and they want to be there. So but I'll let you continue. Good yeah. thank you, Lisa. Can they record? Like record their classes that the kids could come in later as much? Um, you know, we would have to talk about wow. yeah, it. Well, yeah, some of the college sure. stuff does that. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. some of the, you know, you can just log in when it's convenient, but you still sure. have the benefit of the real time or the interaction sure. between the students, questions that were asked or yeah. something like that. I think that goes more back to the tech piece and right. ensuring that we've got quality sound, mm -hmm. quality, you know, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise that might be even more frustrating for them to try to sit and listen. But right. again, there's nothing wrong with, with looking into it. So. What are we looking forward to? Our staff deserves a break. <laughs> one person in this district that hasn't worked exceptionally hard. And so uh, for everybody to have some hopefully much needed restful and joyful time off is very exciting and something that you know the district as a whole is looking forward to. By uh, January 15th, we will have professional learning day for teachers. Um, so we're looking forward to that. The plans are in the works there. Uh, January 18th actually is Martin Luther King Day, so there's no students that day. And then believe it or not, you guys end the first semester January 29th. So mm -hmm. I did a follow up when you were saying the, the tech piece. Is that yeah. something that Oakland Schools Technology Department could assist in maybe helping out, or is there something that they have that we can utilize or is I mean just some problem solving if we no, I love that. Yeah, tap I, into that. I don't think any answers are wrong yeah. right now, yeah. and any well, idea is a bad idea. I, um, I, yeah, I think it'd be we have to really study the consistency of technology in other classrooms. Right. I think it comes down to um, classrooms display devices mm -hmm. that yeah. we would need to have to pull up uh, something like that where we would have in person and online. That's a that's a shift in the a curriculum model right and, and, so, and that's just, even a challenge if i may with um with our when everybody is online is being able for the kids to see again best efforts by teachers across the board trying yeah. to think of creative ways that they can show what they're trying to do but you know if they're trying to duplicate what they would have in the classroom if they were up at a whiteboard or you know somehow making something appear so all can see and they're as they're doing it live and that's also very tricky when they're at home doing this. So that piece, right, is a is a thing across the across the mode of, of presentation. And if I yeah. could just say one thing about Oakland Schools as far as their technology division, they have a lot of resources in place. They have a lot of agreements with districts across the county. Okay. So it might be worth it. Additionally, the ED of that department was at Brandon for what, like 13 years? Right? That's a good advantage. Yeah. So he understands, he knows the baseline that he yeah. put in place here from a technology perspective and What's his name? What's his name? Pulse 4. Okay. Yeah. So definitely a reach out. I'm not sure, I'm not skilled on all the different options that they offer, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth a conversation because they're, you know, they're willing to provide As support. We, well, thank you. As we move, move down this pathway, and this could be over a year, two years, uh, yeah. we definitely want to have. PD time and, and extra help and assistance. And I'd suggest it may be beyond that because as we've all discussed, yeah. trying to take what we what's good about this and bringing it forward, mm -hmm. then it may be an improvement that supports bringing the good forward. Right. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, and I, I think it's really important to say to our tech department, they have maximized every ability oh, of everything they, they have. have. They are amazing. They've yeah. been absolutely amazing, and so. Um, they really help us push the limits of what, of what we do have to maximize the opportunities. So 
that's what I have um, for our Ed report uh, this month. So I love that middle picture there jumping into the new year. So mm -hmm. I wish everybody a happy, happy new year and Merry Christmas. So Thank you, Thank you, Carly. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else yes. got anything for Carly? No, thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. And I, in a way, they, the kids may not be happy to hear it. I'm glad they are trying to do some form of a, exams. I mean, they're going to get those in college anyway. So we're college preparing them. If, if we're looking for the compromise, and I think we found a good spot. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Good. Okay. Next, we're going to go to our action items. Uh, if I could get a motion to approve the premier contract. Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the premier contract as presented. Second. Okay, my recollection we discussed this last time. Yes, we did. Okay. Seven. Yep. Anybody got any questions on that? Okay, could I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Calaga. Yes. John Chartier. Yes. Melissa Clark. Yes. Marianne Dwyer. Yes. Lisa Cavaluna. Yes. Kevin McClellan. Yes. Diane Solder. Yes. If I could get a motion to approve the Brandon Education Association Stop Gap Agreement. Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve the BEA Stop Gap Agreement as presented. Okay, discussion on this and the next couple items, Dr. Andrew? Yeah, so yeah, so we're really looking at all the all the unions. Um, the best spot and the BEA. Administrators as part of the stop gap, so that we need to have a little bit of additional time for negotiations. And hopefully, we complete it by the March 31st deadline that's on all three of those uh, documents. Any discussion? Could I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Calaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Could I get a motion to approve the Brandon Education Support Personnel Association Stop Gap Agreement? Approve the Brandon Board of Education, approve the BESCO Stop Gap Agreement as presented. Support? Okay. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Calaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Okay, can I get a motion for the Brandon Administrators Association Stop Gap Agreement? From the Brandon Board of Education approve the BAA Stop Gap Agreement as presented. Support. If I could get a roll call vote, please. Kimberly Smith Calaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Mary Ann Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes, sorry. Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Motion passes. And if I could get an approval for the superintendent search firm consultant. I'd like and, to talk about that. And the, as you can see, and then the discussion uh, before that. But the, Do you want to give the qualifier yeah, as, the qual to why, as to why we're approving in this process at this time? Yeah. What What's going on is the only decision is that if we did do and when we would do a superintendent search next year that this is just setting the picking the firm it's going to be the branded 2021 school board that will determine any parts of the process on what's happening moving forward but we we need to secure this firm in order to have them for a process because if we don't we're going to delay the process it could be weeks if not months uh, with both even indicating there are a lot of school districts that will be looking for superintendents. So this is just to secure a firm and nothing else specific attached to it yet, that that will be determined next year. I, I think we're moving a little too fast on this. That we should slow it down and that we should give uh, Carl a chance to, to run with it a year at least. So we can figure out, you know, so the new board members can figure out, get acclimated to the board. Second, they can choose, help you choose the firm that they want to. And two, and to and, and keep going, you know, they just, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> but I just feel that it needs to, we need to slow down. Uh, I mean, because we're going into teacher negotiations, 
we're in uh, epidemic. Uh, there's a lot to handle right now. Uh, there's a lot on this plate. Uh, you, you still got students that need to be taken care of. They're going from, you know, the regular homeschool to 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 back to in person. You know, you got a lot to do, and I just think we need to slow down and and give a time for Carl to run with it. Give him a you know up until January, then the new board can uh, give him an evaluation, and if they like him, you won't even have to deal with them. The, the uh, search firm, you know, that's my feelings on it. I agree with John. However, it would have been nice if we had a motion on the table to discuss the matter with. But my my concerns are with what John said, as well as with the pandemic still kind of going on as much as it is. And again, with a lot of things on the plate, all the negotiations and things of that nature, it seems to me that you know, Dr. Hydrus got a lot on his plate. The new board is going to have a lot of things to digest, and. Uh, it just seems that I, I would move it out a little bit. I don't disagree about selecting the firm. Yeah. Because I do agree one point or another, that's a good point. Yeah. I think the timeline, me personally, and I'll just I say my piece, you do what you want. But I think the timeline should be slowed down and, and probably really consulted with, with our interim superintendent on the timing, because I think it's gonna be very rushed with everything else going on to get someone in place at the time we originally talked about it, which essentially was at the before the beginning of next school year. And I, I see both points, totally. I mean, I, I'm there in a lot of ways. This year has been a little more difficult, but this decision, let's just say that this, if a motion were to be made and pass, it doesn't do anything but say, this is the search firm we securing, would use. We're just securing it. So we're yeah, not securing that so we're we can have it. them. But, I, but again, I think what you guys are saying the next year's board, and this is based upon the decision made, I believe it was in September when we discussed it, they will pick the timing of this. And, right. I, and again, that's where board members will speak up and say, wait a minute, this could be rushed or no, I think we could do that. But that's got to be a decision that the 2021 board members would make. So we're, we're only making, like I say, that putting that little uh extra to make sure we or the security that it if they want to move forward because it's going to be some fresh faces now that they we, at least we have a search firm we're ready to go forward with but go so, ahead Melissa. so we're just like to make sure we're clear and everyone's seeking to understand we are just putting a placeholder mm -hmm. if we decide to move forward and the 2021 board decides to do that we are letting whoever we decide know hey we may want to talk to you but we are at least just put us in a placeholder. Because it took us three months to get just here. Right, so that's what we're yes, doing tonight. Exactly. We're just placeholdering our name. I think that's an important point, that it yeah. took us three months to get here. Yes. It took us three months to get the scheduling of both organizations to do their pitch yeah. for us to hear Do it, the RFP. Do the RFP. So I think that's an important point. And if we were to even punt and say, oh, well, let's decide at January 11th, then we have to do another pitch, potentially. We have to, right? And another element is in the presentations themselves to, to echo many of the comments occurring. And I don't disagree with Kevin or John. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's clearly a lot going on. There's no question. If we were, two points. One, the presentations, the presenters, authentically, I don't know, sales pitch, I don't know. I don't think it was just a sales pitch. Their pipeline gets full. Yeah. They contract. Yeah. And so to even know that we are out there you know, looking for the services, I think we at least need to identify one. And then secondly, um, uh, it really truly is a placeholder. It really mm -hmm. truly is. If in contrast, we were looking to, to sign a contract and, it, and move forward with the process, you know, as if we had, you know, um, a blank slate, that is not what's happening. This is truly just a placeholder to ensure that if I I'm going to go ahead and say in the I'm going to go ahead and say in the off chance that we we need to go through this process we have it in place and the new board is not behind uh, an, an eight ball inadvertently and, and kind of feeling rushed then or you know settling stuck yes yeah. you yeah. settling if you're in a cramped or decision making process settling or really in a pickle mm -hmm. yeah not even settling. So if it was more than just what we're doing tonight, 
I would be uh, in line more with definitely what um, uh, Kevin and John are saying, but given the, the narrow purpose of, of our motion and if it's on the table, and that's why I wanted to raise it before, because to even present it as a motion, I wanted to ensure whether it should even be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's my two cents. Does anybody else have any discussion on it? If not, does anybody, would somebody present a motion? I will. Um, move the Brandon Board of Education approved to select Michigan Leadership Institute as the superintendent search firm consultant as presented. Support. Okay, any discussion on that? Could I get a roll call vote, please? Did you have something? No, oh. no, I was good. I was, I just thought they had a tighter, a tighter, um, Presentation in general. Oh, we yes, need to. Right. I just felt like it's just more that's more of what they do, that's more of their specialty versus MESB has a broader reach yeah. on well, services and stuff like well, that. So they would get us. Yeah, I, I think I think they did. I think it's worth noting too, because this happened a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's worth noting they're local, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're fairly local. They have the superintendent academy. So they've got a lot of things in place that support that selection process as a whole. Just yes. for anybody listening. Yep, mm -hmm. correct. Thank you. Local? Yep. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. John Chartier? No. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. With understanding as it was put by Lisa, I'm voting for the firm. I am not voting for the timeline. And there was no timeline in this. I understand. Post. Like I said, based on reflecting what Lisa said, <laughs> yeah. I'm agreeing. Diane Salter. Yes. A motion passes. Could I get a motion on the approval of the second reading of the Title IX policy? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the second reading of the Brandon School District Title IX sexual harassment policy as presented. Support. Hey, any discussion on that, Dr. Hydrick? Uh, our administrators have been trained. Uh, we are going to do some professional development on January 15th for about 45 minute videos so the entire staff will be trained on Title IX procedures. Okay, any questions for Dr. Heidrich on this? Can I get a roll call vote, please? Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Could I get a motion for the approval of the extended COVID-19 continually, continual continuity. continuity of learning planning? <laughs> Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the extended COVID-19 continuity of learning plan as presented. Support. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Discussion board. Did somebody support it? I did. Yes. Okay, I thought I heard it over there. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. If I could get a motion for the approval of a RFP for the preschool playground equipment. Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve to issue an RFP for preschool playground equipment as presented. Support. Okay, roll call vote, please. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Marianne Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Okay, next on our agenda, we have the citizens' input. Let's see if we have anybody. Again, raise your hand and we'll call on you. See no hands raised. Okay, seeing none. Now we go to the best part. Kevin, you want to step forward and come on over this way a little bit? Oh. <laughs> okay, I got my little cheat sheet here. Kevin, if I got this right, you started in about December 2010. So we got about 10 years that you've been on the board and you served as trustee and president. You have all your kids have graduated from Brandon. 
Uh, you served as our education representative to MASB and to the Oakland County Schools Association, and also on athletics, finance, curriculum, policy and procedures, and personnel, pretty much all of them. But we wanted to present you and thank you for your service uh, for these 10 years. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Okay. Marianne. <laughs> okay, and I, I, I need to sort of say this. I can remember a little over four years ago making a phone call to Marianne's house and her husband answering the phone and made a comment at your wife home and I'm just going to ask her a favor. And he's, he's like, whatever you want, Diane. <laughs> Something to that effect. Here we are four years later. Thank you. I really, when I, I, so people know she's got experience in nonprofit and finance. I think you have been pretty much our treasurer, like almost all the time. But I'll take a look at this and see what it says. Oh, you did serve as trustee, board secretary, and treasurer. Both kids graduated from Brandon, and you've been finance, personnel, and policy and procedure. But thank you, Mary Ann, very much. I just want to say this has been a great group to work with, even the four years. Not, nothing I expected to do, but it has been very rewarding. And I did apply for the position um, to be on the board because she, when she called me, we were leaving and I applied for the job remotely. Deadline, we were going on vacation. So it was kind of like crazy. I was getting calls from Pontiac when I was out, mm -hmm. out west. and. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great experience. Thank you very much. Okay. Last but never least, my buddy John. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> John, I can remember you came aboard about the same time I did in 2012. And you have been the most easygoing person about. I just want to be trustee. I just want to be trustee. And he, he has pretty much ran our building site committee all eight years. Mm -hmm. you, you have been the go-to. Uh, both your kids have graduated from Brandon, plus yourself. And did I miss? Nope, I think, okay, you want to make sure. But Brandon was the, where you graduated also. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the big thing that resonates to me is the reason you decided to come onto the board. And you really said you wanted to give back to this community and how important it was being a part of this community, this school district, and you knew that you could give back. And this past eight years, you did give back. And I want to thank you. And thank you. I really thank you very much. You saw that. Uh -oh. <laughs> you got the earth shaking there, John. <laughs> I will also just add we do have a little treat that we'll be able to cut up into pieces and send your way uh, that we won't be able to do here at the meeting. But I, I just really, we're losing a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of experience. What do we got about 22 years? That is that is just appearing off this board, and I just want to thank you because even for me, these last eight years, it's just been navigating through all of that. So I know lots of experience. It's been a lot. Of, yes, a lot of ebbs and tides. Yeah, but I just thank you for your service, and and don't be strangers. Come on back, help us out here in any way you can. Uh, anybody else got anything else to say? You can leave, but you can not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, jokingly, we know where you guys all live. <laughs> no, I just, I want to say is like the newbie uh, being here for two years, the amount of knowledge that you guys have given me and the the standard that you have set in the bar is pretty high. So my only goal is to make you guys proud. Um that we continue doing the work that you guys are passionate about. So I just want to say thank you as the newbie for everything you guys did for us to transition us to. Yeah. Well, thank you guys, all of you, for working together. 
it's been a long 10 years, you know, especially Maria, Jan, Diane, you know, we've, we've been through an awful lot of stuff together here over the last many years. So I appreciate all of you, appreciate all your support. Same thing with all my fellow board members. I appreciate all of you, all your support, all of your points of view and perspectives, whether they agree with mine or not. Um, I value all of your opinions and, and all the decisions that we made together. I think overall, no matter what's happened, um, we generally, as a board, been unified and, and done what we felt was in the best interest of the district and the kids. And I'm very proud of that. Very proud of the history. Very proud of what we've accomplished. And, uh, you know, leaving with a pretty good legacy here of where we stand today. So, again, I, I've been honored to be on this board with all of you. I wish you all the best of luck. And back to Diane. Yes, you know where I live. And <laughs> if you need me, I'll be glad to help. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody too. Uh, it's been wonderful working with everybody. Uh, we had to go through some tough decisions together. Uh, it was emotional sometimes. Uh, thank you so much. It's been just a blessing to be able to participate in this program. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, can I get a motion to go into closed sessions for negotiations? I move that we go into closed session for the purpose of negotiations. Second. Roll call vote, please. Kimberly Smith Collada? Yes. John Chartier? Yes. Melissa Clark? Yes. Mary Ann Dwyer? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kevin McClellan? Yep. Diane Tilton? Yes. Closed session. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go, what was that? I just had an interest. Me too. <laughs>